भगवतो अर्हतो सम्मा संबुद्ध स नमो तस भगवतो अर्हतो सम्मा संबुद्ध स नमो तस भगवतो अर्हतो सम्मा संबुद्ध स साधु सो टुडे वी हैव अ वेरी गुड सूत्र अबाउट कम्मा और कर्मा इन संस्कृत so uh, the uh, about kama the buddha has given this uh, discourse it is from angutra nikaya book of 10 and the sutta number is 216 creeping creeping means anything which crawls uh, or uh, which a uh, uh, kind of uh, creeps away or uh, runs away when uh, uh, you see them going you uh, see them as going a, 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 on a creeping uh, way like a snake is there or a mongoose is there or something like that so the buddha also explains it in the sutta so uh, we will start it and i will be kind of interchanging bhikkhu and student because that is the way uh, bante vimal ramsi also kind of uh, does this because this is for anybody who is learning or uh, in training so uh, we will start uh, the sutta because i will teach you an exposition of the dhamma on creeping listen and attend closely i will speak yes bante those bhikkhus replied the blessed one said this and what students is that exposition of the dhamma on creeping students being are the owners of their kamma the heirs of their kamma they have kamma as their origin kamma as their relative kamma as their resort whatever kamma they do good or bad they are its heirs so the buddha starts out with the uh, explanation of the kamma uh, that the kamma is something which is the action and uh, what is the uh, action it is an action with intention so in uh, angutra nikaya book of 6 63 sutta the buddha says that intention i tell you is kamma intending one does kamma by way of body speech and intellect or mind so uh, so from body speech and mind if an action is done with an intention and that is called kamma so this kamma when uh, uh, a being does they are the owners means uh, whatever is the result of that action good or bad uh, he has to bear the uh, uh, responsibility for if he does good then he uh, reaps the good benefits if he does bad then he reaps the uh, benefit which are bad uh, uh, then uh, uh, like an heir uh, who kind of uh, inherits uh, from uh, his uh, or her uh, parents or grandparents the wealth or uh, property or something like that in the same way we are also heirs of our kamma so we in uh, inherit whatever is, uh, comes across Uh, from the past actions we have done they have kamma as their origin that means that when the uh, the uh, being uh, is uh, born uh, his reason for the being born is kamma kamma as their relative so uh, whatever uh, relations are there that are also related to kamma kamma uh, as the resort kamma uh, is the uh, thing which uh, kind of you fall back on and and whatever kamma they do good or bad they are its heirs here someone destroys life he is murderous bloody handed given to blows and violence merciless to living being so this is kind of referring to the first uh, of our precepts he creeps along by body speech and mind his bodily kamma is crooked his verbal kamma is crooked his mental kamma is crooked his destination is crooked his rebirth is crooked but for one with crooked destination and rebirth i say there is one of two destination either the exclusively painful hells or a species of creeping animal so uh, the word crooked uh, the buddha is using uh, many times in the sutta the crooked uh, uh, is a, uh, a word which is used uh, and uh, for the opposite a straight straight is used so it is showing that uh, the uh, the actions which are not wholesome uh, will lead to one of two destinations which is uh, in the hell or the creeping animal and what are the species of creeping animals the snake the scorpion 
the centipede, the mongoose, the cat, the mouse, the owl, or any other animals that creep away when they see people. Thus, a being is reborn uh, from a being. One is reborn through one's deed. When one has been reborn, contacts affect one. It is in this way I say that beings are the heirs of their karma. So uh, here uh, the Buddha is clearly exp uh, explaining that one's birth is related to one's uh, actions which uh, one has done. So the kama, uh, the time period for the kama to kind of affect you is uh, threefold. One is uh, that the, the whatever you do that action, you immediately get the result for that action. So the kama and vipaka. Uh, sometimes it is mentioned as vipaka. Sometimes it is mentioned as kama phala. So the kama phala or vipaka what you experienced is immediate, or it is uh, in the intermediate period. So in this uh, very lifetime, you will experience the uh, results of it. Or it can be experienced in other lifetimes. Uh, it can be uh, not uh, the, uh, uh, exclusively the next lifetime, but uh, in any other lifetime also, whatever actions you have done, you will be able to uh, gain uh, the benefits or whatever is the result of it. One example uh, the Buddha gives is of, of a, a, a merchant who uh, gives a dana to a uh, pacheka buddha uh, and then he is reborn for 12 uh, lifetimes uh, as uh, a, the wealthiest person in the uh, kingdom but uh, after giving the uh, dana he had a uh, mind that he, he said that i want to uh, i may not have given it to uh, the monk but i should have given it to my workers a little more food so because of uh, his intention after giving the dana of uh, taking it back, uh, so on the 12 occasion when he's born uh, as a uh, richest person, his uh, wealth uh, does not pass to his uh, children, but uh, goes to the back to the kingdom. So this is how uh, the effects of the karma can be uh, uh, experienced immediately. It can be experienced in an intermediate period. It can be experienced in a long uh, period. So that way you will uh, experience. And then what is the other thing which is uh, something which is uh, not uh, uh, a correct karma or action is someone takes what is not given. So uh, there, there is uh, somebody steals something, engages in sexual misconduct. So, uh, sexual misconduct is uh, 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 there is a uh, to have sex with uh, somebody other than the partner, have a sex with the minor who is still under the uh, care of the parents. And if there is any kind of law uh, of the land, you are breaking those law of the land, or there is a hurt hurting the partner. Speaks falsehood, speak divisively, speaks harshly, indulges in idle chatter. That is the fourth uh, precept. So that is uh, related to speech. So uh, one is uh, falsehood. Div uh, divisively means uh, if you go to one group and uh, tell. Uh, uh, them uh, things uh, which kind of makes them angry for the other group and then you go to the other group and tell them something which makes them uh, angry about the first group and then the uh, both those group kind of uh, fall out or have a uh, tussle so that is a speech which is divisive speech means it uh, kind of uh, makes people fight speaking harshly is uh, speaking a curse word uh, speaking something which is a kind of hurtful to people Ideal chatter is speaking something which is not relevant or not kind of beneficial. And then the eighth uh, uh, point is, is full of longing. So uh, the mind is full of uh, uh, cravings and uh, 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 wanting uh, other uh, different kind of things. Has a mind of ill will and intentions of hate. So if you have a mind which is intention of hate. So as we had uh, explained about the uh, uh, definition of karma, the, uh, uh, it is starts with intention. I tell you, uh, uh, intention, I tell you, is karma. Intending one does karma by way of body, speech, and mind. So even if you are thinking uh, thoughts which are uh, of ill will and uh, hatred, those things are also uh, not uh, a good thing. Even if you are not speaking something or you are not doing an action, but just having a mind of Ill, Ill will and intention is a wrong practice. 
holds wrong view and has a incorrect perspective thus the person has a wrong view the wrong view is there is nothing given nothing sacrificed that means that the, the uh, when you are giving some uh, dana that dana has nothing no value and that is not considered to be a sacrifice nothing offered that is also the same thing that when we are uh, 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 giving a dana there is uh, no possibility of giving a dana nothing offered means even if you give something there is no kind of karmic effect there is no fruit or result of good and bad deeds so there that is also a, a philosophy which was there at the time of the buddha uh, which they said that if you do some good action you will not benefit from that good action if you do a bad action you will not uh, benefit from that one example uh, one philosopher gives is that if on the bank of uh, ganga uh, on the one bank you uh, give gift to everybody in all the uh, place uh, on the on the uh, plain of the ganga and on the other side you go uh, around killing everybody uh, and uh, burning everything uh, down but uh, what you have done uh, on the right hand side of the bank which is which is giving everybody uh, gifts and dana and food that will have no good uh, benefit for you or there will be no consequences for the bad uh, uh, things which you have done on the other side so that is a totally wrong view uh, one can have and only a person which has a view which says that uh, there is nothing given uh, nothing sacrificed nothing offered and there is no fruit or result of good and bad actions Th that a person uh, even if they uh, are holding that view very strongly and they give a dana there is no good benefits which accrue to them there is no this world and no other world so <coughs> the person believes that there is no this world means this is everything is maya that everything what is happening is just an illusion so uh, i am not there you are not there this is just uh, an illusion and there is no other world means there is no heaven and there is no hell or there are no other uh, realms of uh, existence so in the modern times they say that it is all a computer uh, generation a simulation theory so this kind of concepts have existed for a long time and as as long as human beings are there uh, those kind of wrong concepts and wrong uh, views uh, do exist and they are uh, uh, bring up in a different manner in a modern times they uh, believe that it is everything is a computer sim simulation Uh, and uh, whatever is happening is happening in a computer, and we will uh, eventually make one more uh, computer game which is as uh, powerful as uh, the game we are playing, and then there will be one other world. So uh, there will be the world in the world in the world, and it is all a simulation. So that is uh, a wrong view as per the Buddha. And the other thing which the Buddha says is the wrong view is there is no mother. no father the, there is no mother the, no father means that uh, you don't have any responsible towards your mother and father the buddha says that uh, if one does not take care of the mother and father in their old age then one uh, uh, faces the uh, consequences which are bad for the person and it is very uh, difficult to repay the debt of mother and father even if you took care of the mother and father for 100 years and took him on the back uh, and uh, 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 made them uh, can roam around the world for 100 years you would not be able to repay the debt to the mother but uh, there are there, uh, there are wrong views which are says that you don't owe anything your, to your mother or father so this is the uh, way it is been phrased there is no mother no father there are no beings spontaneously reborn there are no being spontaneously reborn means that there are no devas Uh, we uh, devas are the beings which are spontaneously reborn so the, they are kind of denying that uh, possibility there is there are in the world no ascetics and uh, brahmins of right conduct right practice who having realized this world and the other world for themselves by direct knowledge make them known to others this is uh, a reference to the buddha himself that uh, somebody who can uh, practice and see for themselves the reality of this world and the other world and they teach so that is the samma sambuddha so the buddha is kind of referring so if somebody denies that there is a possibility of a buddha that is a wrong view 
he creeps along by body, speech, and mind. Somebody who has uh, uh, this kind of wrong view or the other uh, ten uh, kinds of things which we have said. His bodily karma is crooked. His destination is crooked. His rebirth is crooked. Thus, a being is reborn from a being. One is reborn through one's deeds. When one has been reborn, contacts affect one. It is in this way I say that beings are the heirs of their karma. Students, beings are owners of their karma, heirs of their karma. They have karma as their origin, karma as their relative, karma as their resort. Whatever karma they do, good or bad, they are its heirs. Here, having abandoned the destruction of life, someone abstains from the destruction of life with the rod and weapon laid aside. Conscientious and uh, kindly, he uh, dwells compassionate towards all living beings. This is the metta and the karuna uh, one has. How he who does not creep along by body, speech, and mind. So he does not have wrong uh, view about, uh, and they, they have no wrong action, unwholesome actions by body, speech, and mind. His bodily karma is straight. His verbal karma is straight. His mental karma is straight. His destination is straight. His rebirth is straight. But for one with a straight destination and rebirth, I say there are one of two destinations, either exclusively pleasant heavens or eminent families, exclusively pleasant heavens. Heavens are the places where uh, one uh, who does good karma uh, is reborn. And there are uh, different levels of the heavens also in the cosmology. Uh, David has, I think, uh, uh, some videos on uh, the website or uh, it has on the YouTube channel also where he explains the cosmology. But uh, basically, uh, it means that earthbound devas are there, then there are heavenly realms are there. And then there is a Brahma world. And beyond that, uh, if one uh, has done a meditation practice in Aruba Jana, then there are uh, realms which are there exclusively mind-based, which are the infinite space, infinite uh, consciousness, uh, then nothingness, or neither perception or non-perception. Those realms are also uh, there. Those uh, realms, uh, you uh, stay there for a long uh, time, and they are very uh, kind of pleasant uh, places. And those places uh, are exclusively pleasant. Uh, and uh, one example the Buddha gives us, it is very difficult to explain how pleasurable those places are. It is like uh, if a, a world conquering king uh, has uh, such, such a uh, pleasant uh, stay at, uh, in earth as a human being. If it is compared as a rock, a small rock, then uh, the Mount Everest uh, can be considered to be the pleasure uh, one person uh, uh, kind of experiences as a deva which is earthbound deva. The, uh, the devas which are there in trees, they stay in uh, uh, temples or uh, in the mountains or the caves. So those devas have uh, 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 pleasurable experiences which are comparable uh, uh, to a Everest. Uh, if you compare the uh, pleasure of a human being as a, uh, a world conquering king. So that is the amount of uh, pleasurable uh, experiences you can have uh, being a uh, reborn in a deva or eminent families. So being uh, reborn uh, as a human being, but uh, uh, being reborn in eminent families, such as those of affluent uh, Kshatriyas, affluent Brahmins or affluent householders, families that are rich with great wealth and property, abundant gold and silver, abundant treasures and belongings, abundant wealth and grain. Thus, a being is reborn from a being. One is reborn through one's deeds. When one uh, has been reborn, contacts affect one. It is this way I say that beings are the heirs of their karma. Having abandoned the taking of what is not given, Someone abstains from taking what is not uh, abstains from uh, taking what is not given, abstains from sexual misconduct, abstains from false speech, abstains from divisive uh, speech, abstains from harsh speech, abstains from ideal chatter, is without longing, is of goodwill, holds right view and has a correct perspective. Thus, there is what is given, sacrificed and offered. There is 
fruit and result of good and bad actions. There is this world and the other world. There is mother and father. There are beings spontaneously reborn. There are in the world ascetics and Brahmins of right conduct and right practice who, having realized this world and the other world for themselves by direct knowledge, make them known to others. He does not creep along by body, speech and mind. His bodily karma is straight. His verbal karma is straight. His mental karma is straight. His destination is straight. His rebirth is straight. Thus, a being is reborn from a being. One is reborn through one's deeds. When one has been reborn, contacts affect one. It is in this way I say that beings are the heirs of their karma. Students, beings are the owners of their karma. They are heirs of their karma. Their karma, they have karma as their origin, karma as their relative, karma as their resort. What karma they do, good or bad, they are its heirs. This uh, students is that exposition of dhamma on creepy. So this ends the sutta. So the Buddha is kind of giving uh, 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 his uh, explanation about how once uh, a person has unwholesome actions that will result in unwholesome re uh, result. Uh, uh, and then if a person has wholesome actions, it will uh, result in the wholesome uh, results. So this is how uh, we can uh, learn from the uh, teaching of the Buddha uh, that how uh, uh, one's action is uh, affecting one person. So there's one other small, uh, I think I, I had a place, a small uh, phrase, oh, one second. I'll just... Uh, from another sutta, I, uh, one sutta I, uh, I have mentioned, uh, I will just give once again, the intention I tell you is karma, intending one does karma by way of body, speech and uh, mind. That is from Angotara Nikaya 6 and 63. That is the reference for that. So uh, is there any questions for this uh, uh, sutta? Then I'll be uh, answering the questions. And if you have any other questions regarding meditation or practice, then uh, we can uh, take them up. Any questions? Is, is the uh, explanation clear for everybody? Can you please speak about verbal kamma? Which kamma? Verbal kam kamma is cruel. I could not follow which, which what is the verbal kamma? Verbal kamma. Verbal kamma is cruel. No, I could not follow verbal. <coughs> Ver verbal karma is cruel. That's what you mentioned in the mm. cruel, very cruel. Mm. So that, those are the uh, things which we speak. We, when we speak something uh, which hurts somebody, which are uh, kind of, which are called swear words. Uh, people kind of are uh, habituated to uh, speaking uh, something square words. So uh, words which are spoken to hurt the feelings of others. So we know that a person uh, has a, a certain physical uh, deformities. If a person is fat and uh, you kind of uh, repeatedly uh, kind of point that out, or if a person has a uh, uh, stain on a shirt or something like that, and you uh, tell uh, deliberately uh, in the public that, see, your uh, shirt is not uh, clean. Uh, something which you uh, kind of intentionally say to hurt somebody, that uh, are the verbal karma which hurts. So that are harsh speech. So uh, in the precept of uh, the speech, uh, which is the correct speech which you have to uh, uh, say, that is the uh, precept, a uh, fourth precept. But in this precept, there are four things which are uh, separately mentioned by the Buddha, which is about uh, uh, speaking truth, uh, speaking, uh, 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 which is, that is uh, not speaking uh, uh, lies, not uh, kind of speaking harsh, not speaking, uh, which is divisive, which is uh, making two uh, groups fight with each other and not uh, speaking something useless like uh, 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 ideal chatter. 
so those things are uh, kind of mentioned by the buddha so verbal uh, karma is very important uh, and it is a part of the precepts and one has to take care and one other thing uh, the buddha points out is when you think about something that uh, is the thinking which happens first and then you uh, 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 speak something so you have to uh, ensure that your mind is uh, free of ill will and hate so if your mind is free of ill will and hate then you will be able to kind of control your verbal uh, karma then if you are used to speaking harshly then your actions can be harsh so then uh, if you are controlling your mind you can control your uh, speech if you are controlling your speech you can control your actions in this way one kind of uh, has a nice uh, uh, life by controlling is Uh, unwholesome actions and increasing the wholesome actions. In in relation to twim, twim by by six r, six r by six r. <laughs> right after this, we'll, we'll be avoiding the we'll be avoiding the thought. Yes, thoughtless we'll, situation has to be uh, yeah, improved. Uh, yes, definitely. And so we have to are, relate everything to our twim. Twim. Yes, definitely. <laughs> so how uh, is more yeah if an unwholesome thought comes you recognize it you release it relax re smile and return back to what yes a wholesome action so that is how you keep on doing your actions in your daily life any other questions sadhu <laughs> sir any other questions okay then uh, i think uh, today uh, people don't have any uh, questions so we'll end this up with the sharing of merit okay may suffering once be suffering free and the fear struck fearless be may the grieving shed all grief and may all beings find relief may all beings share this merit that we have thus acquired for the acquisition of all kinds of happiness may beings inhabiting space and earth devas and nagas of mighty power share this merit of ours may they long protect the buddha's dispensation sadhu sadhu sadhu